Welcome to my channel everybody. Thank you for stopping in and um, thank you for subscribing and hitting the like button. It does help my channel out and uh, God bless you and you are a blessing. President Joe Biden campaigned on ending the Keystone XL pipeline and on his first day he delivered. Biden also campaigned on no more drilling on federal lands, period, 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 period. He has mostly lived by that promise, only opening up limited explorations after court ruling forced his hand. That was the worst mistake. He has been constantly against drilling for oil or building the pipelines that would transport it. But now that Biden desperately wants more oil in America, this anti-drilling position leaves him in a bind. How to get oil when you insisted on leaving our oil in the ground? Biden has three-part plan for oil without drilling, and all three parts are bad. First, Biden reportedly tapping the strategic oil reserve, announcing another 10 million barrels on Thursday. <coughs> this puts the reserve at its lowest level in nearly 40 <coughs> years according to Senator Chuck Grassley, Republican of Iowa. Sometimes you just wonder what President Biden's thinking is. Now wait a minute. Hold on, people. Hey, now let's not fight, okay? Now be nice. Boo-boo, you behave. Oh my goodness, corral those kids, four-leggers. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is an act of desperation for a short-term fix, obviously. Timing to bring down gasoline prices the month before the midterm elections. Second, Biden tried to lobby OPEC to increase oil production. Lacking any real leverage, OPEC said no. And so, enter Act 3 in this oily play for drill less oil. This act is set in Venezuela. Biden is reportedly lifting sanctions on Venezuela's corrupt and oppressive government so as to allow Chevron, a company in which he has very interesting connections, to drill there. It's all deeply embarrassing for the Biden administration captive to an environmental movement that wants to end drilling in the U.S. based on a dream of zero carbon future. Biden is now reaping what he sowed. We all can't say we knew it would come to that, but he was leading to hit bottom sooner or later. But I don't think it's been soon enough. The irony is that Biden knows, or used to know, better than to listen to his party's extreme ideological base. Biden has often given in to this base, though. And the result now is him sucking up to Saudi Arabia and Nicholas Mandrero, begging them to do what he's afraid to drill. Baby, drill. Well, you reap what you sow. Isn't that the way it goes? Yeah. If you do a no-no, they call it karma now. We'll come back and get you. Reap what you sow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's see what else is new. Let's see. Where did I leave off here? Oh, here's one that's interesting, too. And... I look at it as a positive situation. Yeah, I really do. But my goodness, I'm 79 years old and I've got energy to turn a can or a box over and read what the nutrition facts are. In fact, I don't buy a product that I'm not familiar with that I won't do that. But this is a positive thing on Biden. So let's give him just a little bit of credit here. The Food and Drug Administration plans to research and propose a standardized 
front of package labeling system so consumers can better understand the nutrition information. Yes, because heaven forbid customers just turn the package over and read the nutrition information printed on the back. In May, President Biden declared to end hunger by 2030 by boosting healthy eating, exercise in hopes of reducing the number of Americans suffering from heart disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. In late August, Democrat Senator Cory Booker sent a letter to Dem Domestic Policy Council Director Susan Rice demanding greater transparency in food packaging labels. So they're, they're <clears throat> all working together to make it better for us. So, you know, you can turn it over or you can just read it on front. Now, when you pick up an item and you look at the front of it, it would be nice to have it there, wouldn't it? I think it would be. <clears throat> so, let me know what you think. And let's see. Uh, citing Democrat legislation proposed last year requiring front of package labeling that would include warnings about salt, sugar, and saturated fat content. And those three right there are killers. Salt, if you eat too much, it shoots your blood pressure right up the scale. Sugar, now I can't say too much about that because I have to have a little bit of sugar. Because if I don't, my sugar drops. Yes, and then I'm in trouble. I break out into a sweat, I get shaky and fainty. And I have to hurry up and grab something sweet, get it in my mouth, get it under my tongue, and then I have to go lay down. And I just go to sleep for about two and a half hours. And then I get up and then I'm, I'm better. Yeah, I'm feeling so much better. And uh, I can't think what they call that right now. It's not diabetes, but it can turn into diabetes. So that's something I have to think about. <clears throat> and then saturated fat clogs your arteries to your heart. So, as well as requiring online food retailers to provide nutritious information on the packages. I do think it's a good idea. I really do. In announcing the front of labor proposal last week, the White House explained that consumers can make healthier choices if they don't have to take the extra step of looking at the back of the package. Well, now you know, seniors <clears throat> that have arthritis in their fingers, in their um, wrist joints, like I do, you know, it we drop a lot. If we don't have a good grip on what we have in our hands, we drop it. So right there is another positive. It would be very nice for people that have crippling arthritis. I have rheumatoid arthritis and it's all through my body. So uh, my hands, I, I drop a lot. Yeah, I have to be sure I've got a good grip and it takes both hands for me. Like I have my coffee here. Let me put it right here. It's my little tumbler, but uh, you can see the crippling of my fingers and stuff. I have to use two hands. I can't use just one. No, They're, my hands are just too weak. My fingers are too weak. Yeah, so that's a positive. Thank heavens we need the positives lately. Even if it's just a food label. You know, okay, they didn't put it exactly like that. Now, let me read back here what's in announcing the front of label proposal last week. The White House explained that consumers can make healthier choices if they don't have to take the extra step of looking at the back of the package. Okay, they didn't put it exactly like that. That's his comment or her comment. According to one White House official, this little label change will shift our health care system away from just treating disease to preventing it. How do you treat crippling arthritis? Crippling arthritis is never cured. Hypothyroidism. Lethal thyroxine, I have to take it the rest of my life. 
if I don't. I've already had one seizure of congestive heart failure. No. So, you know, you got to think about that. Who knew the solution was so easy? You know, so shift our healthcare system away from just treating disease to preventing it. See, it can make a difference. Just a little label on the front of a can or jar, bottle, whatever you're there shopping for. I agree. I I'm all for it. The administration truly does believe the country is populated by half-wits. I don't quite know what that means, but I don't think we are. I think it's good for people that need that and for everybody. <clears throat> Boy, they can make some really unsatisfying half-wits uh, suggestions here that we don't know what the hell we're doing or we're nuts or we're crazy or we're half-wits. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, God love them. <clears throat> the FDA also plans to propose an update to the nutrition criteria for claiming a product is healthy. That's what I mean. But now going back to the uh, YouTube videos, and I've, I've looked at some of them, and <laughs> let's just say potato chips. We all love potato chips. I love what they call the wa the uh, wafers or the the ones the wavy ones, the wavy potato chips. I love them and onion dip. I love them. But have you watched the video on how they're made? They're not even made out of a potato. No, they're not. They're made out of this concoction. I watched it here just last week, and I thought, oh, my God. Yeah, if you want a potato chip, you make your own, and they're so simple. They're very easy. If you've got uh, one of those slicers, you know, just peel your potato and use that, uh, what do they call them slicers? But they've, they've got a very thin blade, very thin blade that cuts the potato really thin just like a chip and you soak your potatoes get the starch out of them sugar starch same thing okay and just slice them really thin and then just go ahead and get you some vegetable oil or a real healthy good oil uh, that you use and uh, you can't do this every day <laughs> you know it's just a treat but fry them up. Now there you got a real potato chip. Now some of these factories, you know, they got to cut back. So they use different ingredients that we don't even know about and put in our food that really is not for us. Watch some of those videos, how this food is made. They're all over the internet. You will be shocked at what they put in that food. What is food, what isn't food, but what they make as food. Watch some of those videos. You'll be shocked. In addition to moving the labels from the front to the back, the Biden administration also increasing the monthly SNAP food stamp amount by $26 per person on average. They cut mine way down, but that's okay. I can make it. I'll get by. The White House also plans to expand access to school meals for another 9 million students by 2032 and expand eligibility for the SNAP Food Assistance Program. So all of that, in my book, is positive. But you really do need to check out how they do some of our food, how they prepare it. They got these big long conveyor belts and your meat runs down that conveyor belt 
And who's telling you how often they sanitize that conveyor belt? You know, you got to think about the sanitizing in making our products as well as what goes in our products. And uh, I was shocked to find out that I wasn't eating a potato chip. It's some something that they come up with because look what it would cost them to buy real potatoes and make our potato chips. Real potato chips. A lot to think about. A lot to think about. Okay, I'm going to go for now. God bless you. And you are a blessing. I'll be back.